First, I'll give you the A-plus story as opposed to the D because we're in Michigan, right? So Ford, good company, done a good job and all that. Good new person taking over. And, and the person that ran it is a fantastic guy. No complaints. But Ford decides to build a $2.5 billion plant in Mexico. And I'm saying to myself, that's a lot. That's a big plan. Now, to do that, I mean, they don't want to talk about that. But to do that, they had to close plenty of things. Is that right? Do you know about it? I assume they closed a lot in Michigan to build that. Is that a correct? You're, you're in the company. So they closed. How many plants did they close in Michigan to build that one big, massive one? A lot? He thinks at least two. Okay. Okay. Get out of here. Get out. Out. Oh, this is amazing. So much fun. I love it. I love it. We having a good time. USA. 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 All right. Yeah, get them out. Try not to hurt them. If you do, I'll defend you in court. Don't worry about it. You know, one of the things that happened, some of the, he wasn't, he wasn't bad, but some of these protesters are really violent people. Now, if we're tough with them, we get criticized. We had one guy in New Hampshire, actually, who was a rough guy, and he was swinging and swinging and punching, and he was really going down for the count. And we had a couple of people in the audience who were equally rough, and they took him out. They took him out. And, no. No, they took him out. And I'll tell you what, it was it was really amazing to watch. And, you know, this was a seriously tough cookie. A guy looked like an NFL football player. We had four guys. They jumped on him. They were swinging and swinging. The next day, we got killed in the press. And we were too rough. Give me a break. You know? Right? We don't want to be too politically correct anymore. Right, folks? So, no, it's very unfair. You know? They're allowed to swing and punch the hell out of people. But if we get a little bit rough in taking them out, oh, we're terrible people. You know, it's, that's the way it is. It's one of the many reasons our country's going to hell. All right. So Ford wants to open a plant. So two years ago, they announced they're going to open this massive plant in, in Mexico. And I'm saying to myself, hey, I was a very good student. I went to the best school, Wharton. You don't have to go to Wharton. You don't have to go to a good school. You don't have to go to school. It's not going to do us any good, okay? It's not. All I know is they're closing, as you say, at least two plants. He's a man who works for Ford. But they close plants. Somewhere in the United States, plants are closing because this thing is massive. So they're going to make cars, trucks, and ports, okay? So I'm saying to myself, boy, that's a big deal. Now, in the meantime, Carrier just announced they're going down to Mexico. You saw that. They just announced it. Divisions of United Technologies are now moving into Mexico. Nabisco from Chicago. No more Oreos, folks. No more. Nabisco is closing their big plant in Chicago. They're moving to Mexico. We better be careful. We better be careful. We're losing our businesses, folks. Pfizer, you know, is moving out of the United States. A big, massive pharmacy. They're moving to Ireland. They're moving to Ireland. We better be careful. You know, this corporate inversion is really a big problem. But Pfizer's moving, and we, we have a lot of companies. That'll all change if I'm president, because I know how to do it. Okay. So here's what happens. So here's what happens, and I put myself in the position. If a guy like little Marco becomes president, which I think is unlikely, I think is unlikely. Look, when you are rated at 31% likability in your own state because he's terrible, uh, you're going to have a hard time being president. But whether it's little Marco or Lion Ted, one of the other, let's say, because, you know, we are down to four people. And the people are going against Hillary, and she is not going to be tough to beat. She is so flawed. She's got such problems. And, and, I, and I do believe this. I do believe that if the government does the right thing, and I'm a big fan and a big believer in the FBI, if the government does the right thing, under no circumstances will she be allowed to run. Even though I most want to run against her. I most want to. So what happens, what happens is if you have one of these people or Hillary as president, what will happen is the following. Number one, they're totally controlled by the special interests and their donors and their lobbyists, 100 percent. 
So, and these are not stupid people. So they will look at it and they'll say, oh, this is ridiculous. This is bad for the country. Then Ford will send its lobbyist up to see the president. And Ford will have raised many millions of dollars for him or her. And we'll send other people up, special interest, donors, stockholders, to see the president. They'll say, you can't do this. I gave you $5 million. You can't do this. I gave you a PAC. These super PACs are a disaster, by the way, just so you know. I don't have any super PACs. I'm the only one who doesn't have a super PAC. I feel... I'm not so happy. I just wonder, is it worth it? You know, I don't know if it's appreciated. I'm the only one. I don't have super PACs. I don't have money. I don't have people going out buying. I don't have to put it. I, I just wonder. I'm spending a fortune, okay? Even though I spend less than anybody else and I'm in first place, I'm here, there, but still, it's a lot of money. And I wonder, do I get credit for not having super PACs? And do I get credit? Do I get credit? Because, you know, I have friends that call me. I had one friend from Michigan just call me, actually. Good guy, rich guy. He said, Donald, I want to give you $5 million. I said, I can't take it. No, 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 you don't understand. I want to give it to you. He said, I can't take it. I'm not taking money. Other than the little donations from people that send in $200 and $150 and $17. Because, frankly, those are people that really believe. And those are people that invest, okay? And... And it doesn't matter to a whole lot. And, and how do you send it back to him? A woman sends me a check for $17.50 with a four-page note. What do I do? Say, sorry, I'm not taking your money, you know. So it's one of those things. You read the letter. You sit down all night and read those long letters. We get the longest letters from people because they, they want hope. And usually the less the money, the longer the letter. It's really an interesting phenomenon. So anyway, so I'm not taking the money. I'm not taking the money. And I say, I say to myself... I really, and I really believe this, I, I know when you go into the booth, you might like Trump, you might like somebody else, but nobody says, well, I, I sort of like Trump, and I like the other guy too, but I'm going to vote for the other guy. I know that I don't get credit for the fact that I'm the only one that's not bought and paid for, folks. It's a big thing. It's a big thing. And, and, you know, it's hard for me because, you know, my whole life has been about taking money, right? Taking money. I take, 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 take. I'm a business person. That's what I'm supposed to do. My job is to take money. My job is, in a sense, I hate to say it, to be greedy. And I'm greedy. I go like this, more, more. I want more, more, more. Now I'm going to be greedy for the United States. I'm going to be really greedy for the United States. So with Ford, so Ford is going to open the plant. Now... When Hillary or, or Ted or any of these people, they become president, they're all taken care of. They're all bought. They're all 100% bought. So they know what's right. It's a bad thing. But they'll be told, you can't do it. This guy gave you 10 million. This guy gave you 5 million. And you know what? I understand that. Psychologically, they can't do it. Well, how can I do that? They helped me when I needed money. How can I say, you got to move back? Okay. So here's what I'm doing. When a company wants to move, I'm going to have the top people talk to them. And I will. I know they're going to say it's not presidential. You know, they're always saying. They said the other night when I won it, when I had the big victory in the super, you saw that, the SEC. The big, big night. We won. We won seven. Seven states. And then we came in second. I mean, second is like a bad, bad thing. I mean, we, we won we won so much. I mean, we won. It was, you know, sort of semi-record setting, I guess. But anyway, so we had this great night. But, but here's the story. So what happens is I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say, number one, I'm going to call. They thought I was very presidential that night. They thought I was so pre They said, why? No, the press. They said, I got great reviews. I made a speech afterwards. I had a news conference. I took questions. And they said, during that night where we won seven states. They said, I was at Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, and they said, he was so presidential. Well, when I'm on a debate stage and I have all these people throwing things at me, you gotta fight back. Somebody said, somebody said, Donald, you're the leader, the prohibitive favorite, just stand there and take it. I can't do that, right? I can't do, they actually said, be presidential. I said, does that mean that I can't fight? So when little Marco spews his crap about the size of my hands, which are big, the size of my hand. Now, he made a thing. He says, well, Donald Trump has, uh, let's see, what can I say? What can I say? So I looked at him. I said, 
Marco. No, I just wanted to set. Look at that. That those hands can hit a golf ball 285 yards, right? Those are good, strong. I've never been criticized about the size of my hands before. I'm saying to myself, "What? Uh, what's going on here?" So anyway, so I have to. So what do I do for the rest of my life? I have the curse that I have little hands. Little hands. Take that guy. So. So I said to my people, so what do I do? Do I stand back and just take incoming and act presidential? So now I'm pre Donald Trump is a con man. Donald Trump is this. And I'm standing like that. You know what would happen? You know how many people I'd have in this room if I did that? I'd have about seven. I'd have seven. And they would be mostly the protesters that were thrown out. So. No, we can't take it. That's the problem with our country. Our country takes abuse from everybody. We don't do anything about it. When Vincente Fox gets angry because we are actually telling him that we're going to have a wall and we're going to build a wall and he's going to pay for it. He can't believe that this country is saying this to him. That's why I loved my statement when I said now it's got to all. I've just loved it. I don't want to repeat it, but I loved it. OK, are you ready? So here's what happens. These guys are going to do nothing. They're, you understand that. They're going to do nothing because they are bought and paid for. In fact, you have special lobbyists. It has Marco Rubio on the forehead. It's like stamp. You need Marco Rubio's vote. You call up a certain guy in Washington. You need Ted Cruz's vote, who, by the way, is totally under the ether of the oil companies, which is fine. But that's the way it is. You need Ted Cruz's vote. It says, call up so-and-so on K Street, 100% he'll take care of it. He gets his million dollars, two million dollars, and you have your vote. You know, it's just the way it works, folks. No good. With me, nobody gave me anything. Nobody gave me. So here's what's going to happen. Here's what's going to happen. Smart people. So they get called and they, they immediately get turned off by their lobbyists, special interests, and donors. Okay, so that's the end. So Ford will build and, and, and by the way, Three days ago, I'm reading the paper, and because there was no pressure put on Ford, they're now doubling down. Did you see that? They're now going up with more. The, you know, the two and a half billion was two years ago. I've been talking about this for two years. And what a better place to speak than Michigan about this, right? Right? But I've been talking about this Ford plant because it bugged me. I've been talking about Carrier and I've been talking about others, but the Ford plant bugged me because it was so damn big. OK, and because it's the car industry. So what happened is this. So what happened is this. They will not do anything. And I think we agree now. OK, now let's assume Donald Trump becomes the president of the United States. No game. Now I'm going to be so presidential. I'll be so presidential that you people will be screaming, loosen up, president, loosen up. They'll be saying. You know, I wish the president would loosen up a little bit. All right. Okay. But here's the thing. I have the best businessmen and best businesswomen in the world. Normal. So what we're doing is this. And they're from, we have the greatest business people in this country. So I will have people, but this is too easy. I want to do it myself because I love doing this stuff. You know, Obama likes relaxing and going on vacations. Me, I like working. I like working. I really do. I like it. So I want to do it myself. So I have Carl Icahn. I have all of these people. I want to do it myself. So here's what happens. I call up the head of Ford and I say, here's a story. I want you to enjoy your new plant. I hope it goes up on time, on budget, on schedule. I want it to be a beautiful plant. And I hope you produce beautiful cars, trucks and plants. And I hope you have wonderful labor relations with all of your Mexican employees. OK. But you've hurt the United States because thousands and thousands of people are put out of jobs. And you're sort of leading the way into Mexico because since you've announced, many other people have announced. And the problem is we have very stupid leaders. We have leaders that are very stupid, but now we have a very smart leader. And here is the story. And here is the story. And here's what some of the super conservatives don't like about me because I'm a free trader, but I'm a really smart trader, right? So I'm going to tell them. Sorry, folks, but every car, truck and part that you make and is shipped into the United States, you are going to pay a 35 percent tax on it. Okay? You're going to pay it. 